Hello my friends and welcome to Open Studio D. I'm Vlad Duchev and today we're gonna talk. Uh, I have several excited news that I would like to share with you and you know it's not going to be demo, it's not going to be a review of the product or tutorials, it's just um, I'm gonna share some information and some thoughts with you. So if you're looking for demo it's not going to going to be today, um, it's not going to be a review or tutorial, just uh, some conversation. So you may ask me what are we going to talk about. Well, I'm going to show you my new bench that I got and I'm very excited about. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, my, my course and also I would like to talk about a uh, subject that a lot of people are actually asking about the style of painting. Um, and uh, like realism or abstract, what is abstract, what is realism. So I did decided, you know what, let me uh, cover, um, instead of doing demo or tutorials or review, which I'm gonna do because I just order a uh, bunch of uh, easels, uh, the fresh easels that are on the market, I would like to test it and see what, you know, if, if there is something I can recommend to you. Uh, I have actually several brushes that, uh, rosemary brushes that I would like to uh, do a review and share with you and so on and so on. But uh, as I said, you know, a lot of people are asking about style of painting. So I decided I'm going to cover this today. And uh, to be honest, I, I was bringing this bench into my studio. I'm just so tired moving stuff around and <laughs> I didn't have time to actually paint. So uh, let's talk, right? So if you'd like to hear my, you know, my thoughts, what I'm thinking, and um, what is in my brain right here, stay tuned. If not, you can switch and watch something else. All right. So let's get started. Here we go. So as I mentioned, the first one I just want to share, and this is my excitement. Uh, I was waiting for this for a long, long time, and I just bought a new bench uh, this right here this is a 24 by 46 long bench um, it's actually toolbox basically a uh, toolbox uh, that I got from Home Depot and I was reading one book uh, I will share about this book later on and uh, she's not mentioning about this uh, toolbox uh, or the, what is called mobile bench mobile shop bench I think it's you know the name and on in this book i actually saw one picture uh was there sitting uh in front of her easel and she was working on and using this and i thought wow this is a great idea because i have same bench uh in my shop and i was like why in the world i didn't think about this and i always was thinking about something that you know like generous art dramas you know sales like uh, you know uh, the table or whatever uh, stool or whatever you call it uh like a bench or something where you can store you know the brushes oils and all your stuff and when i saw the picture i was like wow that's it i'm getting i'm getting this so finally two days ago i found this um uh, it's called mobile shop bench um i guess that this is for uh mobile repair guys uh in the mobile shops like car repair shops uh, because it has a lot of uh, it's actually has uh, nine drawers uh, and one big one I'll show you I'm, I'm excited about this uh, it has a wooden top as you can see it's a wooden top uh, heavy duty very straight like polished you can as you can see uh, this is my oops this is my palette uh, tempered glass palette that I'm using um, to mix my, you know, my paints. Uh, and you may ask me where I got this, because this is a big size, right? Uh, I can share it with you. And, you know, there is no secret. <laughs> this is actually a board to write uh, using markers from Ikea. Uh, very simple, right? You have to be creative. So I saw this in the Ikea, I said, you know what, this is tempered glass, looks like tempered glass and it's a great size so i got it i remove all the hardware and i'm using it as a pa my palette mixing palette all right so this is the table 
very polished. You can actually mix your colors right on the table. Um, nothing. The reason I got this because I used to have, let me show you. I used to have this. This is was my uh, this was my uh, mixing palette uh, sitting on shelf basically, and I was using this and then palette my uh, temper glass palette. So this is the same product. This was just a small one, and I think I got this from Home Depot for the small bench, uh, same mobile bench shop. So I decided, you know what? I need something. I need something bigger. And I finally got it. Now this runs about $800, but I found this for $380 at Home Depot a website. And I ordered online and actually picked up it from the local store. Now, the beauty of this, first of all, it's 24 inches right in front of the easel. This is basically the length of your arms, you know, stretch. If you take the brush, you can stand actually longer and you're not painting like this, which I strongly don't recommend. You're standing literally five, five, six feet away from your paint from your painting. That's what you need to step back. Right? So this is this is great. And 46 inches this way. So you have a lot of uh, real estate, basically. And as I said, if I put this right here and I slide, it's like a vacuum, it's just sucking in. That means what? That means that table is very, very well polished and straight. So, finally I have place for my two jugs of uh, brushes. I have sp space right here, a lot of space. I can put my sketchbook if I need or something, uh, some references. I have space right here where I can put I'm not going to open this door because I want to show you. I can put my napkins. I have paper towels right here. Everything is in the front. I have my uh, chirp or my terpenoid uh, natural where I'm cleaning my brushes. I have my medium. I have my Alexa to listen to my, you know, the music when I paint. And I also have some markers. And I just pull something that, that I want to show you. Um, I this uh, this is something really great. You won't be able to find it anywhere uh, because actually uh, this was given to me by my brother when he was alive uh, and this is two um, like a metal things um, you know in a circle and when you paint or when I paint and my my you know when I paint for a couple hours and my hands start getting really stiff uh, you know no less blood circulation because you're standing and paint like this so what I do, I normally take this, I have one small one and one big one, and I just take with this one and just roll on a finger like this. And roll back, ooh, it gives like a goosebumps. And I roll it on every finger and back. Ooh. So somehow this, you know, it's not really sharp, but it triggers the nerve system and blood circulation. So it's, you feel like it's, you know, blood is coming. So I just roll on every finger, just relax, not looking at the paintings. And uh, it just gives, oh, <laughs> it gives the goosebumps. And uh, on each, each fingers. And then I'll take the big one and I just roll. And this is normal. <laughs> this gives like, oh. And just roll on my hand and trust me several times like this and it will just gives blood circulation right away I don't know how you can find this but I strongly recommend if you can find it I don't know even how to search <laughs> probably can get it on Amazon but it's always sits right here and I normally use it all right so let's um, go back to my bench so a lot of real estate, but what is amazing about this, everything is right here. Let me switch the camera and I open the door, secret door. All right, so the one thing that I really like is a key. Now, I don't have a children. My you know, children are already old. Not old, but uh, you know, they live uh, separately from us. But it, you know, I know my granddaughter may be coming and so I'm afraid that she can come and, you know, take the you know, paint and try, try to eat it, right? <laughs> so uh, I can like the studio, but if, what if, you know, I forgot and, you know, she will come. So what I can do, I can actually lock. So let me show you. Here's a lock. I can actually lock 
uh, the drawer and that's it. Nothing, all doors or, or drawers are locked. Or I can unlock it and this is the beauty. Are you ready? Here we go. You open the box and everything is right here. It's a huge, it's about four inches tall. I have all the paints that, in, and look, I have so much you know, space, empty space. I have, I, I can move all my paints that are sitting on my shelf and move it right here. I have my sketchbook and napkins, you know, ruler, paints that I'm using constantly. I have paint right, you know, on my shelves. I'm gonna transfer it right here so everything is in this drawer. And all you have to do is just open it up, and close, grab the paint, squeeze, put it back, close. Do you feel my excitement? Highly recommend, highly recommend. Basically, I just empty, if you can see right there, I can I just empty two shelves. So I can use those two shelves for final paintings, just store. Uh, I move a lot of stuff. I have my uh, bookshelf, not bookshelf, my uh, analyzing rack, what I call it. Uh, was, there, was, there was a lot of bunch of stuff uh, on that uh, rack and right now it's empty. And I can put, you know, drying, put uh, my you know, paintings, uh, drying paintings. I empty spot for my frames, which are sitting right there, so I can put it along the, you know, along the wall. But, because a lot of stuff went to this uh, bench, and I have the total of nine drawers, and two at the bottom big ones, it's like really like 10 inches tall or 12 inches tall even. So I can pull up all my chemicals that sits right there, right here. I can put actually in the drawer, and I'm planning on doing this, so everything will be locked. So if somebody will come, nobody can get actual to like terpenoid or a terp or, you know, gimso or anything, just, you know, get it. So everything will be locked. And I have actually extra space for empty uh, canvases, not empty, but white canvases, like for study work, I can put in draw it as well. So that's my excitement. And I decided, you know what, I have to share it with you. So if you on the market to get some like, a, what do you call a tablet, right? Uh, or a shelf, shelfy table. Tablet is a more professional term uh, where you can add a lot of drawers and you can put all the paint, the brushes and everything. This is your tablet, basically, uh, this bench. It's heavy, it's with everything, all the shelves and everything, it's 380 pounds. You have to see me two days ago when I brought this. I ba barely unload this, <laughs> uh, this bench from my car and my wife said like, what are you gonna do with this? And I was like, I don't know, but I'm gonna get it in my studio. <laughs> and I got it. I just pulled all the drawers, emptied, and finally, somehow, it was, <laughs> it was terrible. But I got it, and it's here. And today I spent time actually loading everything and moving everything into the bench and organizing everything. So I'm very excited about this. And the reason why I was doing this also, because I started recording the courses uh, for, um, you know, oil painting, my course, online course, and I'm very, very excited because uh, that's the reason I'm shooting less videos because I'm working hard, really, really hard on, on, uh, on the courses. And it's not about recording, only recording, it's actually organizing the thoughts, the, you know, the, all the knowledge into, like, you know, put them on, on the shelves, uh, so to speak, um, because you have to organize everything. But also, it triggered uh, something else. Because I'm organizing everything, how to present it to you, know, to you, and organizing everything. And I thought, you know what? A couple weeks ago, I was sick, my wife was sick, and uh, you know, we were at home, and I was in my bed, and I decided, okay, let me read the book. Uh, I recently purchased one book, where, where actually I saw the bench. <laughs> Uh, and this book by Carol Marine, uh, Daily Paintings, which I do all the time, but I don't call it daily painting, I call it study work, which is daily study work. Same thing. Um, I was reading her book, very good book to read. Uh, she's talking about value, she's talking about, but it's all, you know, it's all uh, not in, in deep diving kind of, it's just recommendations. So here's the values, here's how you can see the values. I mean, uh, you know what, let me take it back. It's not. Like in the surface, it's it's you know she she put a lot of information inside, 
and I understand that you know it's it's very hard to uh, explain everything in, in a in a book you know small format book. Um, but I was reading that book, and then I start working on my uh, script for videos, and then it's just triggered something and I said wow you know what I'm working on my uh, script for my videos why not to take that script and convert it into book <laughs> so I decided all right I'm gonna work on a script for my videos and do recording of the videos for my course online course and at the same time I'm gonna work on my book which is crazy it sounds it sounds crazy but I'm already doing this. So uh, this is another excitement that I just decided to share with you. Uh, so this is my basically project for 2022, if God's will, uh, you know, with all his blessings. So I'm going to, I'm planning on finishing, uh, if God will let me, finishing the course, online course, and, and I'm actually excited to work on a book, oil painting book, which will be supporting kind of the uh, online course. If you'd like to learn oil painting and at the same time both of this triggered my workshops because I'm gonna actually create my workshop around the same around the book you know, around the uh, online course so I'm gonna take small portions of the courses and create the workshops and I was uh, excited to do uh, I was thinking excited to do about maybe six workshops but I just got uh, start getting the invitation to plain area for 2022 and I was like uh, I have to decide it what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a break from recording and book and workshops and go to you know plain air events competitions or should I skip so I decided to because I know you want you really like watching those plain air competitions apparently like you like to see in these competitions, which is really good. But I decided to actually cut 50% uh, of these, you know, the competition that was invited, uh, and I'm gonna do maybe four or five competitions. And I know some artists, they do like you know 12, 15. Uh, John Eisman, a friend of mine, uh, we paint together all the time on the competitions, and he's probably watching this. John. Uh, you did last year i think you said 17 or 18 competitions i have no idea how you did it <laughs> this is i would be exhausted for another year probably after 17 plain air competitions it's just uh so i decided no 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 i'm not going to do all you know i'm not going to do even you know 12. i'm going to do maybe four or five uh that i really like I have some relationship with you know the you know, organizers and I like location and so on and I will re record uh, if it's different than from previous. Also, uh, so that's my goal and I'm gonna work on my book and my online course and YouTube videos, uh, demos and paint. I need just you know all, all this takes a lot of time and as you sort of realize I'm painting less so I need to paint more and more and more. Um, just paint. So that's my excitement that's my you know shared information and also another thing that I would like to talk about is um, the subject that a lot of people asking and I created uh, based on you know on the script that they're working on the videos uh, one of my workshop that I would like to offer it will be realism of abstraction and you may say like lad realism of abstraction I would say yes realism of abstraction let me explain <laughs> so you're right the realism and abstraction is always you know those two things or styles of paintings are completely on different poles it's like a north pole and south pole right north south and north not north and south north and south poles right sorry so uh it's like on two different ends of the you know pole uh, realism we can say what is a realism it's probably we can talk about hyper realism right there's a hyper hyper realism and then uh, on the other end it is a super abstract paintings it's like something like white canvas with black stroke of brush that's it right but why my workshop will be uh, realism of abstract because it's all uh, related for example, if I show you this painting, I just finished this painting uh, a couple days ago. 
Is it cl close to realism or it's abstract? If I flip this, if I flip this painting like this, your brain will start thinking and trying to link the shapes. For example, if I look at the painting like this, uh, my head was probably going to go like this right away. Because my brain is rec recognizing this is more the color so of the sky, this is more color so of the ground, this looks like a trees. So my brain will try to, to turn me or my head, my view, my eyes, so I can recognize complete recognition of the shapes. If I turn this painting like this, and you look at this as like, is it upside down? Because your mind, your brain is recognizing the shapes and recognizing this is more the, the sky color, this is more ground color, and this, this looks like a tree and so on. If I put this way, your brain will realize or recognize the shapes right away. This is the sky, this is a tree, this is a foreground, a background, this is a foreground. You know, right here, right here, pulse of the fence, um, some, you know, here's a tree, here's another tree, and so on and so on. So you're basically realizing the, uh, the shapes, and the shapes come together, or work together as a composition, right? So, if hyperrealism on this, and let's say it's 100%, I mean 0%, and uh, super abstract, uh, super abstract is on th this point, and this is 100, 100 points, right? Uh, this painting will be probably somewhere in the middle, somewhere at 50 points, right? Because it's not super realistic, but it's not super abstract. So it's somewhere in the middle, and you, you know we can discuss it, or you can argue: is it 45, or it's 55, or 60, or 40? But somewhere in the middle, right? So let me take another painting. Uh, this is a small painting of uh, Bato de Korchapov that I really like. He's a you know Russian impressionist, uh, very famous Russian impressionist, uh, contemporary Russian impressionist. Uh, let me show you. This is his painting. So, if I put it this way, this is the first view of you can, as you see. It. What you, you what you can recognize. Your brain is not recognizing the shapes. I can tell you, because even I finished this painting. I'm looking right now, and not I'm not recognizing the shapes uh, because this is not a sky. This is like a sky, but this not really. You know, this may be lake, uh, this is sky maybe, but what is this? So it looks more toward like 80% abstract, right? Even if I uh, turn this way, your brain is not recognizing the shapes. The, sh the sh shapes are not recognizable 100%. But if I turn this way, your brain may say, oh, you know what? I'm recognizing this looks like a sky. This looks like a tree or trees. This looks like a building, you know, and this is more in the shade, in the shade and this is more exposed to the sun. This is kind of brick wall or something, two trees. And so the brain is actually recognizing some shapes and building the structure together. But as soon as I flip this way, it's not recognizable. So this painting is more on, I would say maybe 80%, or maybe 85% of 85 points toward abstract. Or I can show you some abstract painting, which I don't have in my, in my studio because I don't, I'm not an abstract painter. Uh, abstract is maybe at 100%, maybe at 90%. But my point, uh, I didn't have a hyper-realistic painting in my studio because I, that's not what I do. Uh, but let's say something like this. I painted this a couple of years ago, uh, and this is the Nice thing. You know, the rainy day, moody day. Now your brain is recognize it right away, right? Because this is two building. This is a pole. You cannot. <laughs> this is a pole with a light. Steps into two poles for the. You know, this is the the boat. It's recognizable 100%. So even though the paintings actually. Uh, the painting is actually painted with a loose brush, right? It's not realistic, kind of like a, you know, tiny brush strokes. It's more loose, 
but our brain is taking those shapes and putting them together right away. It's, it's, it's milliseconds and recognizing everything. And that's how our brain works. So my point, uh, why I call my workshop realism in abstract is basically uh, you have to decide how you paint, but you, you know, it's more um, on realistic side or more toward abstract side uh, in shapes, not in brushwork it, you know, or style of you know, the colors or mixing. It's all about shapes. That's how our brain is you know, working. So my, my point is uh, you have to decide where you want to paint. Uh, you want to paint toward abstract or toward more realism or hyper realism by shapes and may, maybe brushwork as well uh, because the brushworks will define you know if I paint um, car I can paint car absolutely you know you know uh, every stroke you know everything like door handle I don't know parts of the, <laughs> of the car but uh, you got it right it's small details or I can do my just several strokes of you know brush it's a recognizable shape uh, of car and it's to be honest it's same if my brain is recognizing this car and this car is more and more on the realistic side or I can do you know one stroke of brush and put maybe two dots recommending this this is could be a car this is toward more toward um, abstract so my again my point is you have to decide what style you're painting uh, and then everything is fine the art visual art is actually amazing because uh, how you paint uh, you know more realistic or hyper realistic hyper realism or more realism or somewhere in the middle like I paint or more toward abstract like Bato du Garchapa paint, and you know, we call it impressionism, which is questionable, but it's different styles, and everything is basically uh, or based on shapes. Basically, if brain of the viewer is recognizing right away something, it's more on a realistic style. If brain is not real, in, in brain needs to think, it's more on abstract side, and all the styles are, you know, all all it's good there's nothing wrong uh, I always say you know the main point the main point of painting make sure you enjoy your work not you like your work because it's a different subject to talk uh, but you enjoying uh, when you're painting uh, and you're creating you know when you're creating your masterpiece or whatever you you know you we work on your painting you enjoy doing this now that's bringing another side you know the conversation of technical skills and we'll talk about this but you have to enjoy and you have to enjoy it and then your viewers your collectors uh or people who are buying your you know your paintings they need to enjoy it and, uh, and not necessarily you have to sell your stuff and uh, you know if somebody's buying your paintings your work that is recognition of artists not not at all you can be another van gogh right so van gogh didn't sell any pieces when he was alive maybe one or two but majority of his paintings uh, uh found um, you know, the homes or in galleries after he would he was uh dead uh so and he sold his paintings not him 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 but his paintings were sold for millions and millions of dollars after his death. So you, you can keep and be another Van Gogh, keep all this painting in, in your studio and keep painting. But uh, what is important, and that's where I'm going, what is important is how you paint or abstract or you know, realism or realistic abstracts. Uh, it's, all re you know, it's all related. How you paint is not important it's important for you or to you uh, because you have to enjoy what you do and it's important for the viewers make sure the viewers will understand your uh, what you're trying to convey to viewers all right what is really important really important is it technical stuff and let me explain um, what I mean by technical stuff you can paint whatever you want and how you want but if you're technical is not there it's not on the map uh 
your painting is not gonna get anywhere. And by technical, I mean if your, let's say, shapes are not right, if your uh, perspectives are not right, your drawing is not right, it's not gonna go anywhere, all right? Only if you're doing it purposely, like Picasso did, right? Or there is a bunch of uh, artists, uh, famous artists, they did specifically. They, they could do really good drawings. Uh, I think we talk about this on other video, uh, and they specifically tune it to so it's crooked and not right, but overall painting was working, uh, is working, and so those paintings are you know the greatest paintings uh, in the history of human you know of human history. Uh, so, but my point is the technical start, the technical stuff is very, very important. So your shapes, your perspectives, uh, the values, if you value the values everywhere, your painting is, in, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. I mean, it's not going to land in, in the galleries or, uh, collectors, um, um, in the collector's houses or whatever, galleries, museums. So the shapes, the values, the color, um, harmonies uh, and everything that relates to technical stuff this is not how you paint this is the techniques that you apply when you paint all right so all these techniques the brushwork the values the shapes the perspective the drawing the color uh, schema uh, make sure the colors are talking to each other all this is a technical it's a technical stuff uh, the you know, call toward the warm and you know, how the cold colors work with warm colors and uh, how you have to bring the uh, brightness by you know dulling and putting dark spot right next to it all this is technical it's all technical when you think the painters artists works and they just you know not even thinking no it's not true uh, we all work and we think the technical stuff first and then we're trying to make sure the technical stuff comes first as a foundation make sure everything is right and then you build on top of this you build what you're trying to convey through the right technical exercise i'm i'm not sure if you're getting this uh i hope you you do so the technical skills is uh number one the technical stuff is very very important especially if you you know serious about painting oil painting you need to learn all these technical skills uh you know how to mix the colors make sure you're not mi mixing a mod uh, how to place two colors together, uh, what you can mix, what you cannot mix, um, understanding the perspective, atmospheric perspective, how to, you know, how to apply it. All this is very, very important. If you look at any abstract or, uh, you know, styles of paintings, uh, the, the pain, painters that are, you know, constantly on our tongues, like we're talking about them, these famous painters, you will see their execution of their paintings like top notch. From technical standpoint, it's just top notch. That's why the paintings are working because the technically it's, those paintings were executed at the highest level of technical skills. All right, and then conveying the atmosphere, conveying what you're trying to you know the, what you're trying to basically say through your paintings is uh, uh, is you know your style basically how you paint. So, uh, saying that, I learned how to paint. And learning is, to be honest, learning is, uh, you cannot say, oh, I learned that, say that now I can paint. It's a process that takes um, probably entire life. Uh, you know, famous painters, they, they always say that they were working hard, you know, like Rappin. He died with a brush in his, in his hand. He was working uh, 12 hours a day. Everybody was like, you know, amazed how, how, you know, he was workaholic, uh, you know, in contemporary term, <laughs> he was working a lot and he was studying a lot, uh, not only painting and he was, I think he was studying to the end minute of his, the last minute of his life. He was, you know, studying. It's, it's a process that takes uh, entire life. So it's, you can, you can learn the basic, right? The basics of, uh, you know, like shapes, values, colors, and everything, the, uh, you know, atmospheric perspectives and everything, it's the basics. And then you just open the door for studying for the rest of the life if you paint. Uh, so every painting is a study. Uh, every, every painting is a study. So that is uh, my talk for today. I'm sorry if it's too long. Um, I'm just excited about my 
bench, <laughs> my new bench that I'm gonna work uh, in, you know, working on my course. Uh, and, uh, you know, ability to work on the bigger, bigger pieces. Uh, I actually enjoying lately working on the bigger pieces like 18 by 14 by 18, that's the smallest and like 24 to 36 and larger. So you will see those demos probably or me working on big, big pieces, pieces more and more. So that's all for today. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Should me go to my website? By the way, probably in a week you will see, if you go to my website, you will see workshops. It will be probably four or maybe three or maybe even two. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm actually working on it right now. Uh, workshop that you can sign up. Um, sign up for those workshops. I have a maximum of only 12 people and a minimum of 10. So it needs to be on a sweet spot of uh, from 10 to 12. And so it would be probably one will be in uh, Norfolk, uh, Virginia, and maybe one in Pennsylvania, somewhere in like Carlisle or Mechanicsburg, that area. And maybe one in somewhere north uh, or uh, like Oxford in Maryland. We'll, we'll see. I'm actually, after in a couple of weeks, I have to make a decision where the workshops will be. So that's all. Um, if you have any questions, please shoot me email on my website, go to my website and leave me a message and I will reply right away. Uh, also, please let me know what you would like to see uh, next episode, review or demo or tutorial or maybe another talk about something. Uh, just let me know. I can create a poll on YouTube so you can you know, click and say, hey, this is what I want. Uh, just, you know, um, I, I want to hear from you. All right. So this will be all. If you're new to my channel, please, this is not all the time. This is probably the first video that I'm just talking and not showing and not doing review or demo. Um, but I've, let me know if this is makes sense, okay? Just talking about the subjects of oil painting. Uh, if you're new, new to my channel, please subscribe, uh, hit the like, hit the bell, and uh, stay tuned. If you are my subscriber, you know, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And stay tuned uh, for new com coming videos. And I'll see you next time. Yeah.